And welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube for some Hecarim Endure. That's right, we're going to be playing a They Who Endure deck with Hecarim, also at the top end. This should be pretty fun. It's been a while since we played one of these kind of decks. So we have our normal Sh Shadow Isle stuff. We're going to be mostly all Shadow Isles. We're going to play three Freljord cards. Those are going to be those They Who Endures. But early on, we're going to have the Shadow Isle stuff with this new card, Fading Icon, but then also Curse Keeper, Hapless Aristocrat, Cards that can attack, but cards you also don't mind dying. Because with They Who Endure, uh, whenever whenever it's summoned, you grant it plus one, plus one for each ally that has died. So we want to have lots of allies die, but we also want to pressure our opponents. Because we want their life total as low as possible, so that whenever we play a very big They Who Endure, then uh, they won't be able to stop it from killing them. So we'll have our things that, that sacrifice those things. We'll have like our Blighted Caretaker, or just one copy of Ravenous Butcher. Bark Beast will be another good payoff of a one-mana card that uh, can attack for quite a bit. Uh, let's see, what else we got? We got the new Spirit Leech. That's another new card. Another way to kill like our extra 0-1 from the Fading Icon or a Curse Keeper to get some more card advantage. And yeah, we'll have our Stalking Shadows, Glimpse Beyond, so a good amount of card advantage in here. Um, as far as other interaction, we got one, one The Box, one Vengeance, and a couple Unspeakable Horrors to... Uh, help us out but then our then our uh, champions Callista, very very good attacking champion and it's not too difficult to have three plus allies die whenever we play Callista. blighted caretaker can do that all on its own and then hecarim so we're not really an ephemeral deck but hecarim is just awesome in this kind of deck because it attacks for so much it's a five five overwhelm that also brings two two twos attacking alongside with it so it attacks for nine for six mana great attacker and that's that's really what our deck's all about plus those ephemeral things those two twos that come attacking those do die so those do help out they who endure also so it's just the combination of like not every single game will have they who endure at the top end so having like six great top end cards means that we're going to be able to curve into having a very impactful top end card a much higher uh, percentage of the time and then of course we have atrocity to finish games out which goes perfectly with they who endure and that is the deck so let's give it a try Hecker of Endure will go play our five games in ranked. Alright, so let's see. Ooh, Shadow Isles. Shadow Isles with Sivir Azir. That's interesting. Alright, we're going to keep one Fading Icon, and let's look for some new cards. I could see keeping two Fading Icons, but... So yeah, I only got one Shark Chariot in here. Again, we're not too much of an Ephemeral deck, but Shark Chariot can actually be pretty slow against a lot of other decks, and it's not really, like, the thing that we want to play on turn two a lot of the time. So we just got the one Shark Chariot that can come back from, like, a Hecarim. Or anything else. That's an easy block. I think if they would have just attacked with the 4-1, the like, I, you would kind of want to block with the 3-1, but then they would turn that thing into a 3-3 three, three that would have been able to block Callista. Okay, that makes sense that they're playing Shadow Isles for... Yeah, that's and that's what it kind of looks like. That maybe they're just playing Shadow Isles for, like, Doom Beast. And it looks like Fading Memories. Hmm. Okay, so, so if they're going Ravenous Butcher, that means that they're going a lot of Shadow Isles cards. So they gotta be playing. Um, they gotta be playing like Curse Keeper, Ravenous Butcher, uh, Blighted Caretaker, all that kind of stuff. So the reason why they did that Butcher play, of course, was the Black Spear. Which is why they did that. And that's that's actually probably true. I, I should probably just be casting Stalking Shadows first before the Shark Chariot. I'm thinking like play Shark Chariot because then that helps out the Callista, helps out the Bark Beast. But honestly, I should probably be playing the Stalking Shadows first just to get, have more information before I spend mana like that. Yeah. 
Butcher. Oh, I did this the wrong way. Yeah, I actually did this the wrong way. I wasn't planning on... Oh, actually, no, this, this should work. Okay. So we just have to sacrifice this thing. I wasn't planning on playing them both, because I was planning on just playing that and then having the shark, you know, come in and have that stuff level up Calista, but actually this makes more sense to do it like this, to have level up Calista, because this should put a shark into play, right? Yes. So that actually just makes more sense just to do this. And I'll just attack here. Well... So attacking attacking with this 3-2 lets the 2-1 block it, but then if they have the 2-1 block it, then... Oh, okay, no, it's the fading icon. It's not the shark. I would have thought that... I would have, I thought I was going to put two sharks into play, but I guess fading icon works also, because I get that 0-1 to block the Sivir. So that works. That's true. Okay. So yeah, that was just kind of a confusing turn that I would just kind of cards I wasn't used to playing and just interaction I wasn't used to, but yes. So the, yeah, so sacrificing my 3-3 just really wasn't worth it at all because if, if I just sacrifice the 3-2 ephemeral, it levels up the Callista and then the Callista brings the ephemeral in, which brings the shark back. So I still would have had that shark come back. So I should still have that 3-3 in play. I can't tell when the Sivir is going to level up. But it looks like I'm probably dead, so... Okay, so I, I messed that up. That was a tricky turn that I should have taken longer and thought about. What is this at? 26? So, is that 26? Can't tell. 26, yes. Okay. So that means 28, 30, 35. And then these all gain quick attack. Spell shield. Because I can't block here, because that's lethal. So I gotta block one of the others. And it doesn't really matter. This keeps me at 3 so that a... Um, you know, like one of the things that does 2 damage doesn't kill me. And I might as well glimpse beyond it. It doesn't really matter what I'm glimpse beyonding. Okay, so it's all about it's all up to they who endure. So they under will be a thirteen thirteen. If they block with Sivir, they go to one. And then that unspeakable horror was a really good draw, because they'd be at one. But I already I already had the atrocity plan for next turn, but now we have atrocity and unspeakable horror plan. Jack or Cackle. Because they were all sad. There we go. And that's why you play Unspeakable Horror, not Vile Feast. Ooh, playing against some burn. Man, those are some leveled up champions. Our opponent's a really good Draven Jinx player. Glimpse Beyond gone. And we'll keep the others. Curse Keeper? No. We need Curse Keeper. Wrong two mana card. We need turn two curse keeper right here. Fading icon, fading icon, curse keeper. Yuck. All right, well, not good. Not good three cards. 
Kind of got three useless cards there. Oh, looks like nobody raised their hand. Alright, well these were four bad cards to draw. All we needed was like a hapless aristocrat, a curse keeper, or a fading icon. Any of those. We couldn't get any of them. And drop. Yeah, not too much Targon today. That's been awesome. Not playing against much Targon. If they attack with Draven, I will block and then Black Spear. If they have Vision, we are in a lot of trouble. Hopefully not. Hopefully no Vision. Okay. That's just not the correct thing to do. I guess I can take two extra damage and kill this thing. Okay, Draven down. So now it's all now it's you know the Jinx game, right? Like with the Draven Jinx deck, they throw a bunch of cards out early. Oh wow! I I again needed I needed one of those one of those cheaper cards. We couldn't find, out of all these draws, we couldn't find any unit that cost two or less. Because, you know, we kept the, the Bark Beast in our opener. <laughs> yeah, how, how could we draw this bet, right? So, like, even just drawing another Bark Beast, like the two Bark Beasts, the three Hapless Aristocrat, the three Curse Keeper, the three Fading Icon, or the Shark Chariot, that was 12, after our mulligan, 12 of our 36 cards. We couldn't find any. This was bad. So basically a third of our deck and six draws in a row missed a third of our deck. But yeah, they kept increasing each time we missed. Time for the main event. And we missed again. Because I can't play anything. Like, I can't play Spirit Leech and kill this so that I can have Black Spear, because then I don't have Black Spear anymore, because then my Kalista's dead. I just can't play anything. Because, like, like if I go if I go Caretaker, what, we, like, block with two saplings? That's not any good. My plan is... Like, we have to kill Jinx. Like, Jinx has to die. That's plan number one. Jinx has to die. My plan was Atrocity Kill Jinx. I, I wanted to block Draven and then kill Jinx. That, that's what I wanted to do. But obviously, we, we can't survive if Jinx is alive. Okay. Hey. Alright, well, they just had another Jinx in hand, so. Yeah, those are terrible draws, doggos. I don't know how we could draw so bad either. How, how did we draw so bad? Okay, so we get to retry that matchup. Hopefully don't brick as bad. Opponent also had multiple Dravens and multiple Jinxes. So they sure live the life. We do have the one, two, three. I guess I'll just keep all of them. The Shark Chariot, like the Shark Chariot's kind of the weird thing. That's that's the one that I'm not so sure about. But it is something we can play on turn two. We have the saplings that bring it back. But maybe that's just still like whenever we need to be defensive. Like maybe that's just not even worth it. So like the, the Shark Chariot's the one. Okay, so I could save the mana for Stalking Shadows instead. Nah. Ooh, 
Because, of course, that Shark Chariot already died, and now whenever I attack with these things, it will die again. So we're really growing this They Who Endure. So yeah, this thing's already at six. <laughs> it's turn three. We've had six things die. Watch and learn. Now we're cooking. So both those have three health, not good for my caretaker that I'm hoping to find. Okay, just not good in general. I stand for nonsense. I gotta work with this joker. One of us dies. Fate brings us together. Alright. So yeah, I could have played the other Curse Keeper and attacked with it. I was kind of seeing what would happen, see if I wanted to glimpse beyond. But I had to give myself options. In case they have whirling deaths or something like that, then I'll, I'm going to have atrocity to respond. Time for the money makers. So they got rid of the thing that makes daring poros. Yeah, poro cannon. And they do have whirling death. I was really hoping they would try to kill the 4-3, and that then I could sacrifice, like, one of these other 1-1s. One Man, they had Get Excited also. That's twice our opponents had last card Get Excited. Okay. So we're still not doing that bad. Right, because we're going to have 11-11, they hinder, and then we still have another atrocity for after they take this. I stand for Noxus. I gotta work with this joker. She's going to be so happy. Um, I don't think it matters if I give them more spinning axes. So I think we got this. You must get by these first. Even though they are the crowd favorite. There's not much reason to put this in front of like a whirling death. There we go. Okay, two and one. We didn't completely brick this time like we did last game. Whoa! Oh no! Twisted fight of Twisted Fate Aphelios. No, that that is a hush deck. Not what we want to see. I like this opener though. Like this is a good hand. Um, I'm gonna keep the box actually because the box does kill both their champions. Their champions are really good. Yeah. Maybe I should pass here, because 
they pass and they are wasting more mana? I'm still good to scrum. Sure, you want to scrum, I guess? Is that what you want to do? You're going to kill my O1? Let's do this. Let's see if they waste a spell saving their box to puss. I could see them doing that. I could see them playing like a guiding touch or something like that to save this thing. Yeah, pill cascade. Cool. Have them waste some spell mana. So the problem, like, Caretaker is my best play easily. The problem with that, of course, is Twisted Fate. Twisted Fate's not exactly a fair card. So I, I was I was thinking that, like, the, you know, the whole Caretaker thing, like, this would have been a great play, but now I kind of forgot about Twist. you know, thought about uh, uh, how good Twisted Fate is. So I guess I'm just going to go with the attack, because Twisted Fate red card would just blow that up so much. And they go Twisted Fate Blue. Alright, draw some cards. I wasn't patient enough. Should have been more patient. We were doing so good, like, this whole day, you know, besides, like, our first deck, we were doing so good not getting paired against the Phalios and Twisted Fate. I forgot how miserable these cards are to play against. Have to do this now so that Guiding Touch, because you, you don't want to like let the damage happen and then they then uh, try to Unspeakable Horror because of Guiding Touch. Especially they've already played two Pale Cascades. Mm. Now they have a Bastion. Yeah, so the box it was only like whenever an, an enemy was summoned this round, so it's already been much too late for the Aphelios. Yeah, I needed to, like the turn four, whenever I played Spirit Leech, that's when this game ended. I played Spirit Leech, they played Aphelios, the game ended. I didn't, because I didn't keep removal for the Aphelios there. I, I needed to not play my Spirit Leech. All right, so we'll kill Aphelios. They'll be able to like buff up this Boxtopus and make it overwhelm and everything, but whatever, I can take some damage. We have to kill Aphelios. And like this, this 5-3 is gonna be stunned into oblivion. They still have more cards in hand than I do. 
even after playing many more cards than I have. Okay, well. Looks like a good spot for Hecarim, because... Remember, they do. They are a hush deck, so like they are the the enemy for they who endure is hush. So I don't know if we could get hush out of their hand first somehow. Just brutal. Okay, cool. It's sad that I'm happy about trading my six mana champion for their two drop that they just got for free from their Aphelios so they didn't even like spend a card on. But <laughs> that's that's what Aphelios and Veil vale Temple do. A free two drop that just trades with my six mana champion. <laughs> Beachy Rise says, every time a Targon match comes up for me, I, I think, I can do this. Then, 45 minutes later, I start questioning all decisions that led me here. <laughs> mm. What are the chances that they have that they don't have Hush? I mean, even if they don't have Hush, it's not like this thing's lethal. Like, they're at 20. Uh, do you think making Aphelios able to summon weapons only on a Nightfall activation could be a good change? I mean, I'd be for that. I mean, that would definitely be... I mean, yes, that would be a good change, because as is, Aphelios is completely unfair, so I would be... I'll be... Like, the changing it from, like, the 3-3 to the 3-2 didn't change the card one bit. I'll be... I'd be for anything that means less card advantage in Targon. Yeah. Anything that's less t card advantage to Targon, I am all for. Oh, they had to burn a hush from pick a card. Man, I wish we had one more mana. Did, could I not play the Bark Beast last turn? Yes, I could have. I, I didn't. I waste my mana. Why didn't I have to play the Bark Beast last turn? If I would have just played this Bark Beast last turn, I could have had Caretaker and They Who Endure. Why didn't I play that last turn? Yeah, I mean, if they just play the card Twisted Fate, they, like, all that's have is a Twisted Fate or a Hush to handle two Thayhunders. I mean, that is a good sign. Stay. Hooray! Alright, Twist of Fate Fizz. We were doing so good today. Not playing against Twist of Fate or Aphelios for so long until these last two. This deck is not a Hush deck, though, so it's not going to be as obnoxious. We're going to have Fading Icon on two. Am I supposed to keep Hecarim? No. Twist of Fate's really difficult to play against with the... Um, with, like, the red card, gold card type stuff. This probably should have been a Bark Beast on turn one. I was, I was thinking... Mm, I was thinking I wanted, like, Hapless or Scrat early... But I guess if I go Bark Beast on one, then I go Fading Icon Caretaker. Because they're not blocking... Yeah, like, they're not blocking Bark Beast on turn one. I was worried about blocking Bark Beast on turn one, but they're not doing that. I don't know why this one's last. <laughs> I just decided to throw it in there. Alright, so that turns bot into being two health. Two health important for caretaker. Never lost a fair game. Eyes open. 
So they're just gonna go turn turn five level up twisted fate before I can even attack it. Please no pick a card, just pass. Don't play pick a card. Oh my gosh. And now they're gonna have rummages. So even got good use out of that ignition. Please no rummages, just let me attack and kill Twisted Fate. Please. There's nothing I can do to stop this. Seems to happen every single time with this deck. Just You just drop Twisted Fate on turn 4 and then immediately level it up. Basically killing Ballistic Bot over Burble Fish because I have Unspeakable Horror. Could be a good card. Soak it in. I'd rather have my five five eat the gold card than the Callista. Yeah, I, I, I hear you there, Fima, yeah. This is basically the affinity. Yeah, this is like affinity. Okay, well, we, we'll attack. Unfortunately, we keep on just drawing these units. We really need an atrocity or, you know, anything like that to finish the game out. But, like, they who endure doesn't do anything against leveled up Twisted Fate because they always gold card. Yeah, unfortunately, they do have the spells. <laughs> yeah, Affinity was a deck built around um, basically built around playing zero mana artifacts and just, just unloading your hand immediately. <laughs> In Magic, and I can see how I can see the comparison here of just how uh, once you get to burble fish, it's just kind of the same kind of thing of like it doesn't like the stuff doesn't just cost zero, but you have to like you have to play a bunch of artifacts to make it cost zero. And burble fish the same kind of thing. Once you play a bunch of spells and then it costs zero, and then you just play a bunch of them. That same kind of thing. Hey, 
is open. So we'll see next week. Um, for those of y'all that, that really don't like Twisted Fate and Ophelios, next week um, is should be the next balance patch change, I believe. And it does sound like... Um, four, six, eight, nine. It does sound like there's a, a decent amount. Or like there's going to be a decent amount of changes. Or we can kind of expect a good amount of changes. No, no developers are have commented, but from just just like there's been many times before that we've had like 15 car changes in a patch update. Like that's happened a good amount of times, and it's been a long time since that's happened. And also with just most like this is this is definitely the 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 most polarizing format that Legends of Runeterra has gone through it, as far as like decks that are really good to you know have have everything playable like this is this is the most polarizing format we've ever had and um, most polarizing like public opinion about the cards and so I and so since it's since we've had a lot of updates where we've had like 15 cards change and that's not all like just nerfs right like that's like buffing up other stuff you know like that's just you know, kind of switching stuff up since we've had a lot of updates like that and it's been a long time since we've had an update like that and this is also the most polarizing format we've ever had it just it just makes a whole lot of sense for there to be a lot of changes it, it doesn't really make sense to keep status quo um a good amount of changes Yeah, so that matchup is why won the box. It's really hard. it's just hard to to have that line up, but you know, it can it can line up against some purple fishes. Um I would prefer I would just prefer some some black spears, honestly. Um in this kind of deck. I, I think you can play three black spears. Maybe even just better than than uh the unspeakable horror. The unspeakable horror wasn't bad for us at all though. But black spear is just the kind of card that that I've, I'm always really, really happy with with these kind of Shadow Isles decks. Because this, you know, like, whenever they, like, play the Twisted... Like, if you if you play stuff first and then they play Twisted Fate, then you can't you can't the box, box it anymore. We saw that with, like, the Aphelios game, Game 4, where I played my Spirit Leech, and then they just played an Aphelios, and now I'm just dead because I can't ever deal with that Aphelios because my, you know, I have this box in hand that you you have to have it, like, that turn. It's, it's difficult. It makes life pretty difficult. Where if you have Black Spears, all you have to do is have something die. Our whole deck is about stuff dying, so it's it's really easy to have stuff die, and so once stuff dies, then you black then you black spear and you get to kill those champions because like those champions of Felios and Twisted Fate, if you can't kill them, you can't win. Like that's that's really all it is, and so uh, like with with either one, like you know, because Twisted Fate levels up and then go, then gold cards your they who endure every turn, so you can't ever attack through, and then um, the Felios can just grab gravitum stun your they who endure for forever. So you can't beat either one if you can't kill the champions, and so uh, maybe something like Black Spear could be a good option to just have. Like, you don't want to like just throw a bunch of removal in this kind of deck, right? Like, you'd rather you'd rather not have removal. You'd rather just like play all your stuff, have your stuff die in combat, then then drop your big things. Like, that's what you want to do. You don't want to play Black Spear in this deck, but it's with those champions, it feels like it's a necessity to have them. Um, and so, as far as like fitting in Black Spear. I would I would keep the unspeakable horrors. You can keep that for like maybe burble fish. I just wouldn't play the box. It's I think this kind of deck has to be like really proactive, and the box is really reactive, and it, they just don't fit together. So I wouldn't play that. Vengeance is just too expensive. So there you go. You, that's that's two spots right there. I know vengeance basically is just expensive black spear. So you, you can just play that instead. And um, the shark chariot honestly isn't really that necessary. You can get rid of that too. The Shark Chariot, yeah, that, that card's not really necessary. So there you go. There, there, there's a way to, to fit in three Black Spears um, and still keep, you know, like we still just keep the whole shell of the deck, basically. So that's that's a change I would, I would recommend. Um, you know, you'd rather you'd rather play the Shark. You'd rather have the other cards. But I think just in, in practicality, I think that Black Spear just um, plays really well. This is a card that, like, when you play out the games, this card plays better than what it, than what it just, like, reads 
whenever you're just like looking the card and it and like how it looks in the deck list it doesn't look as good but like when you play the games out it it ends up being really really good if, if that makes sense like there's some cards that that are like that other cards that are the other way around that like look really good in the deck list but then don't end up delivering as much whenever you play them but i think black spear is a, a card that will um end up doing more than vengeance or uh or the box and and i've just i've just noticed that like the shark chair really is just kind of too slow i know it's it's you know another another two drop but I, it has just kind of been been too slow but like this black spear like that would help against like the draven jinx deck too right like if we would have had um some black spears in here so yeah so i that's that's a small change, but I'd, I'd recommend that one. But overall, you know, like we went two and three, but our deck looked pretty good. You know, like we, we had like the one game like where we just completely bricked against the Draven Jinx deck and that happens, right? Just like when you play any deck, like you're going to have some games that you just, that you just brick and you just draw uh, pretty bad and draw all of your top end and stuff. And, and so like, okay, like that happens. So besides that, we were two and two, just losing to, you know, like Aphelios and Twisted Fate, two incredibly good cards. And, you know, that also... And <laughs> that happens, but I, I liked it. I liked the deck. It was fun to play, and uh, it looked strong. I, th I thought it, I liked how how it looked. All right, but so there we go. So that's Hecarim Endure. All right, so those of y'all uh, watching later on YouTube, hit that like button over there, and of course, feel free to leave those comments as well. I would appreciate that. Let me know what you think, Black Spear, um, or anything else. All right, but that's that's all I got here for this one. So thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you for the next video.